Hey everyone, today we're going to talk to you about the sales of game software here in the United States and how Nintendo Switch actually owns 19 of the top 20 software sales. Now there are some caveats to that, but it does show Nintendo's dominance. We already know that Nintendo dominates in Japan. It makes up like 97% of all console sales this year in Japan. And yes, they frequently own the top 10 software sales week to week. But that turns out it's really starting to extend to the United States, even though there are obviously significantly more PlayStation 5s and Xbox Series being sold here. Still, the fact that despite that, Nintendo is able to own so many of the top software selling titles of 2021 is quite amazing. Now, before I get into that and get into the caveats of the data, I want to remind you guys to go ahead and hit that subscribe button because any new subscribers all the way until January 27th actually get an opportunity to win $100 cash. Now, you can receive that cash, whether through Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, uh, whatever app you guys happen to use that I can actually get the money to you. Uh, I can obviously also give it to you in a digital currency form, whether you want it as an Amazon gift card, uh, eShop card, or whatever you can choose what you want but yes we are giving away that to one new subscriber here over the next month also we have three copies of pokemon legends arceus being given away as well to enter for that you need to go down to the description or the pinned comment and click on that viral sweep link now let's get into this because i have the data here um, and it comes from amazon us and the reason we're choosing amazon us is not only because the data is publicly available but because amazon is actually the number one retailer in the united states they sell more of basically everything compared to any other retailer that exists whether online or you know in person including walmart and all that so the sales data they have is often representative of the grander industry on the whole not 100 now there are some caveats to this data for starters how they list game sales is different than you might see in say the mpd report the mpd report will list game sales with combined digital and physical and also combined versions sometimes that's not the case here with amazon so caveat number one is a digital copy of a game and a physical copy of a game are listed completely separately on Amazon. You'll notice this when we go over last year's numbers as a comparison. Uh, and then when you also look at it, they don't combine versions together. So say you have NBA 2K, they're not going to add the Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and Xbox One versions all together. So a lot of these multi-platform games are going to um, be a little bit shocking how low they are on the list just note that doesn't mean they're actually not higher as you guys know the mpd is always reporting that madden and nba 2k and call of duty are near the top of the list every single month but that's because they're multi-platform so a lot of this is just individual platform individual game version sales uh so again the sales of all the games are likely higher but either way it's just as impressive first off Let's just go over comparison for what 2020 was, because Nintendo killed it last year, too. We all know this. Nintendo's won like 37 of the last 38 months on the market in, in the United States in terms of so, uh, system sales. But 2020's uh, top 10. We're just gonna, we just got the top 10 here. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons, the physical version. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Animal Crossing New Horizons, the digital version. At number 6 is Cyberpunk 2077 for PlayStation 4. Ring Fit Adventure at number 7. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Uh, number 8, the PlayStation 4 version of The Last of Us Part 2, and then The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And that was the top 10 last year. You see there were a couple PlayStation games that got in there, some big ones. Um, Cyberpunk obviously being a, a big third-party game. But yeah, that obviously showed that there was, uh, for individual system sales, Nintendo was really dominating even last year. Although Sony, you know, Last of Us Part 2 was able to crack into that list. This year it's even worse for everybody else. So we have the top 20, and there's a reason we have the top 20. First up, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, best-selling game on Amazon this year. Just Dance 2022, the Nintendo Switch version, is the second best-selling game this year. Animal Crossing New Horizons is the third best-selling game. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond is the fourth best-selling game. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD is the fifth best-selling game. Mario Party Superstars is the sixth best-selling game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the seventh best-selling game. Super Smash Bros. 
Ultimate is the 8th best selling game. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the 9th best selling game. Metroid Dread is the 10th best selling game. Pokemon Shining Pearl is the 11th best selling game this year. Super Mario Odyssey is the 12th best selling game this year. The 13th best selling game is New Pokemon Snap. The 14th best selling game this year on Amazon is Minecraft the Nintendo Switch Edition. The 15th best selling game is actually Just Dance 2021 uh, for the Nintendo Switch. The 16th best selling game this year on Amazon is Luigi's Mansion 3. The 17th best selling game is Super Mario Party. The 18th best selling game is, surprisingly, Carnival Games. Man, we actually featured that a couple years ago at this point for Nintendo Switch. Number 19 is Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. And finally, we get to number 20, and the reason we're doing the top 20, we finally have our only PlayStation 4 game in the top 20, that being NBA 2K, the one that came out this year. So, yeah, as you can see, extreme bias towards Nintendo software. It just shows Nintendo's dominance isn't just in Japan. We shouldn't be surprised. The Switch is the market leader. It is you know, probably over 100 million units at this point, according to our own metrics and according to VG charts, likely according to Nintendo's metrics as well, even though they're not publicly announced yet. The Switch is dominating. The Switch has an opportunity to become the best-selling system of all time. We'll have to see how it gets there. Is there going to be another revision to boost sales? It's a little bit more powerful, started, still part of the same generation. How much longer is Switch going to be on the market? Is it two years, three years, four years, five? Is it going to be like six more? like you know playstation 2 was on the market for 12 years i don't know what i do know is nintendo is dominating the software and hardware department right now now why are they doing this it could be pandemic related it could be uh just related to releasing evergreen titles what you notice in that list is not all those games came out this year Nintendo has this knack for evergreen titles, titles that sell millions and millions and millions of copies year over year over year over year, despite not lowering the price on most of those games. Only Nintendo seems to get away with it, and I'm not sure why. You know, you look at Horizon Forbidden West coming next year, it's probably going to sell 10 million plus copies between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, maybe even more. But then after like a few months, it's going to be in discount bins because there's, the sales have dwindled that much that they need to do that. And even after being discounted, it still won't sell additional millions. That's the crazy thing. They discount these games to keep them selling extremely well, but the discount's not keeping them selling the same as Nintendo, who isn't discounting. See how weird that is? How Nintendo's getting away with a business strategy nobody else can, and then even the strategies they do use to maintain sales still can't hit the same sort of sales Nintendo gets year over year. I mean, where the heck is PlayStation's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe selling you know millions every year? Every, Breath of the Wild, millions every year, every year. It, it, it's insane to me that Nintendo can do this, but it does show the incredible sales power of Nintendo IP. It shows, obviously, the fact that people are highly satisfied with Nintendo games and are comfortable paying 60 bucks a pop even years later. It also shows the incredible power popularity of the Nintendo Switch hardware. There's a lot of criticism out there in the gaming community that the Switch hardware is underpowered and weak and stupid and blah blah blah, it's 2015 technology, LOL, Valve Steam Deck next year. But hey, the market is speaking. They're loving Switch. They're loving what Nintendo's doing and they're continuing to buy Nintendo games at record paces. So what does this really mean? It means Nintendo fans have nothing to worry about for the current and present and future of Switch. In fact, we should be stupidly excited because 2022 is going to be another massive year and Nintendo's going to want those games to sell for years and years as well. If there is a next-gen Switch in 2023 or beyond, uh, it's likely going to have all these games backwards compatible and or, you know, ported versions of them because it works so well for Switch with Wii U. Why not do it again? And obviously the biggest caveat here is just showing how popular Nintendo is. It can be said almost without trepidation that in 2020 and 2021, Nintendo might be more popular now than it's ever been. They've opened theme parks, right? They've gotten Lego sets out. They've obviously gotten the, the owning the sales charts and record paces here in the US, Japan, and most of the world. Nintendo is doing something with Switch that even the Wii and DS era didn't do. And that to me is absolutely incredible. So yeah, Nintendo's kind of at the peak of its power. The question is, what's Nintendo going to do now that they've been on top for a sustained period of time? See, typically when companies get to the top, they falter, they drop, they make a mistake. Sony didn't seem to do that going from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. Yet, we'll see what happens down the line. But is Nintendo about to falter now that they're back on top? I don't know. 
Time will tell. Some people feel like the Switch OLED was already a falter, but is it? It's still sold out. Sure, you might walk into your local Target or Walmart and find a few Switches, a few Switch OLEDs on the shelves here and there. They probably will be gone in a couple of days. The demand is incredible. Shintaro Furukawa's warned us that they can't keep up with demand right now, let alone in 2022. He's already telling us stock shortages aren't going anywhere next year. You might have a hard time anytime you want walking into a store and buying a Switch OLED. Same for PlayStation 5. Same for the Xbox Series. Same for graphics cards, unless you have to have a local micro center that gets thousands of them at once. I honestly think we are in a situation right now where I am very nervous for Nintendo. They have not always done their greatest work when they're on top. It usually leads to a Wii U situation, a Virtual Boy situation, a GameCube situation, and I love all those platforms for different reasons. But if we're honest, that's Nintendo squandering their time at the top. So let's see what Nintendo does this time under new leadership. Shintaro Furukawa's first major task as president of Nintendo is going to be, what do we do now that we're at the top again? Is he going to react the way the late Iwata did and blow the lead? Or is he going to learn lessons from the past, apply that to the present and the future, and keep this momentum going in the same way Sony can keep it going generation after generation after generation? If the 2022 lineup is anything to go off of, it certainly feels like Shintaro Furukawa is taking lessons from the past and applying them to the present because we've never had a lineup like that in year six. Let's think about that for a moment. The fifth year, the fifth birthday of Nintendo Switch is happening on March 3rd. Most of the games coming next year are gonna be happening during the sixth year. And I know it, you can look at it and be like, why do we call it the sixth year? It's because once we get to March 3rd of next year, we have completed five years on the market. That's why it's your fifth birthday. So we will be in the sixth year for most of those games. And Nintendo's never had that kind of year in its sixth year for games and software lineups. So we'll have to wait and see. But for right now, things are looking up, and I don't know what's going to stop them except for Nintendo themselves. All right, folks, I am Nintendo Rebel Chance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.